In this series, we're going to look at um, religious art uh, and uh, discuss them, uh, the, the works together. This is a work, uh, Christ, uh, by Eric Smith, painted in 1956. And I've, I've known this painting and loved it for or over 50 years because when I was at the seminary in the late 60s, it used to hang in a very prominent position just outside the library. Um, Eric Smith was, was still a young man when he painted this. He was about 37. Now, I never realised that, but all these years he was living because he only died in 2017 um, at the age of 97. Um, he became a Catholic um, after the war and got involved with the Blake Society for Religious Art, you know, which supported him both artistically and also in terms of faith. Um, and in the first 25 years of the um, uh, history of the, of the Blake Prize, uh, he entered 44 works uh, and he won it six times. Um, in the mid-60s, he did a number of these uh, images of Christ. Uh, and indeed, you know, one rather like this um, won the Blake Prize for him for the first time in 1956. This is not the one that, that actually won, but it's similar. Um, he really represented the ideal for the, for the Blake Prize because they wanted work that was clearly religious, that was modern and yet figurative, um, that was scriptural and Christ-centred, um, and also an expression of, you know, personal faith the sort of paintings that would be suitable uh, to hang in churches. So um, I love this. I find it very moving. It, it's, it's an image that's, that's filled with, with pathos. It, it, it represents the moment in the Passion um, when the soldiers uh, put the, the purple cloak on Jesus. They, they plate a, 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 a crown with thorns and, and put it on his head and the reed in his hand, and then they begin to, to mock him. And despite the violence of the story, there's, there's a beautiful you know, serenity, a humility um, in this figure. And I think that's, from an artistic point of view, it's because of the big square stable blocks you know, uh, in, in which the, the painting's organised. And yet, I mean, the colours are intense. The, the purples and the blues you know, speak of, of um, really you know, intense emotion with the little bits of yellow light that, that suggest ultimately a triumph over suffering. For me, I find it much easier, you know, to enter into a painting like this, which is not, you know, kind of literal in a, in a photographic way. It, it, it kind of draws you in and, you know, enables you to, to meditate and to bring your own uh, faith and your own reaction, you know, to the, to the image. Um, interestingly, um, Eric Smith was always restless and searching. Um, from this point on, his works become more abstract. Um, they explode into, into shards of colour, a little bit like you know, stained glass windows. Um, yes, it's, it's an expression of his deep faith. It, it's modern in style. Um, but he decided after a while that he wasn't saying anything new about Christ. Um, and hence the, the move into, into abstraction. Now, in, in fact, two of his works from, from the Blake Prize, he, he ended up destroying because he was unhappy with them. So he was always, you know, kind of searching to do something more. Um, but for me, like whether he says anything new about Christ or not, for me, this is a very moving image, you know, very um, powerful and emotional insight um, into, the, into the passion story that, that we hear on, on Good Friday. So that's, that's, that's my reaction to it. Um, one of the things that, that always interests me with painters is um, painters as the readers of scripture, in part because I, I worked for some years in the Apostolic Palace and each day I'd walk past the great uh, frescoes of Raphael and it struck me that he was an extraordinarily powerful reader of scripture, quite apart from his magnificence as an artist. Now Smith is not Raphael but this, I think, is a, is a profound and profoundly nuanced and in some ways ironic reading of what you find in, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, because it is an image, as you say, of, of the suffering Christ, and he was mocked. The irony of the, the purple robe, supposedly royal, he's bearing a scepter, again, that's ironic, as is the crown of thorns. 
But in fact, what Smith does, and this is again very like John's gospel, he, he, he creates a sense of majesty so that what was meant as ironic from those who persecuted Christ, the soldiers, in fact spoke the truth. And it's that double irony that this painting gets. So, so it, it is Christ suffering, but Christ also in majesty. And the way Smith has put him on a kind of a throne and the fact that he seems to be sitting, that's something you rarely see of the suffering Christ. But the fact that he's sitting on what seems to be a throne uh, creates a sense of, as you say, calm. There is a pathos, unquestionably. So he captures that sense of, of the pathos of suffering, but, but the majesty of one who is not just swept along by the tide of events, but who is in complete control, and that sense of obedience to the Father's will, even in this setting. So, so I, Smith may have thought he was saying nothing new uh, about Christ, but he is reading what we find in the Gospels as only really fine artists can. As I say, he's not Raphael, but that painting is a profound reading of what you find in the text of the Gospels. Yeah, I agree with that. And one of the things that um, came to me when I was looking at it, and I did stand for quite a while during this week um, just to look at it. And the first thing that came to mind was, for me, was the cultural nature of painting. Despite the freedom, the cultural nature, my spirituality was born and grew a little bit in Spain, which is very passion and Christ focused, usually bloody, usually has the rituals of, which is beautiful. Um, Irish, Anglo, I dare to say Aussie, we're not really like that. However, this painting being abstract still transmits that passion, that suffering of Christ and of, I would say, of humanity. That was what was coming to me when I was looking at it. And I have to say, I, I resonate a lot with the presence and the peaceful side of things because despite the fact that it is thorns, you, can, you, you don't even know if the eyes are closed or open, really. They look closed, but you don't know because what you have is thorns. It's, it's that slight tilt of the head and the position of the hands that gets me. So you've got, for me, it feels like this is an exhausted yet thoughtful Christ drawing you in. And, and what is truth? Or and would you stay with me? Um, and in a way that, for me at least, um, evokes Jesus' suffering, which some cultures tend to avoid a little bit more, I think. Just look at him suffering and therefore Christ's body suffering. So it's an invitation to think about a wounded world and a wounded um, God who is inviting us to reflect and see Christ's presence there. Um, so for me, it's a very contemplative painting. It kind of draws you in to that space. You know, I think it is contemplative. And I like what you say, Maeve, about the face and the head, because th there is a sense of the, the human being crushed by suffering, uh, the sense of almost being overwhelmed, but at the same time, that sense of composure. In other words, he almost seems to be sleeping. And there's this ancient tradition of Christ sleeping on the cross. And from the side of Christ there is born the church, as from the side of the sleeping Adam was born Eve. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, the subtlety with which he's combined a sense of suffering and almost a composure that leads to a sleep that is untroubled. And again, the same kind of ambiguity is, is marvellously portrayed. You, you pointed to this, Tom, the thorns, but behind the thorns there is the hint of a halo, as you say. Mm. The, the golden elements uh, seem to be the, the forging of a halo, so the combination of, of the suffering of the thorns, but, but in fact leading to the, um, to the triumph of Easter. Mm. Yeah, for me, it, it, it's the passion, but it, but it doesn't get all, you know, um, tied up in the, in the suffering the way some of the Spanish stuff does, no. or, you know, the, the movie, the, the Passion of the Christ, you know. Um, here there's a, there's a dignity and, a, a, you, you said, majesty. Uh, for, for, and for me, that's, that's what's most moving, I think, mm -hmm. um, the, that he's able to transcend all of the things that are happening um, and, and really go beyond Mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is what we do when we celebrate the liturgy on Good Friday. But the, the little details that intrigue me, for instance, the, what seems to be a crown 
here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, almost as if Jesus could reach for a true crown. I don't know if it was meant to be a crown, but it looks like some kind of golden crown to me, as if it's just within reach, but not yet. And one thing about um, what Eric Smith said about his own um, painting, you've already said something, Tom, about him feeling he hadn't anything more to say, but he has one phrase when I was reading and watching him, which was something like, when I start to paint, I know what I'm expressing. So it's not like he goes with an idea, but when I start, so, so it speaks to me, and even the power that we're saying of, of being able to stand before quality, good art, it draws you in and it says something, but it says things that words wouldn't say because it says things. And art does things, expresses things that we may not even have conscious. So I was drawn to think, what was, what was Smith's faith like? And yet this is one expression of Eric Smith's faith, even, even Perhaps he didn't know what he was going to paint when he started, if, if we're to follow what he said about himself. It was about expressing as you did it. Uh, and I find that fascinating because then this happens, which you can't say in words. Also, the way in which he's coloured the throne behind the figure of Christ. On the right, as you look, it's a royal blue. But on the left, there is, there is the black, which, is, which suggests death. So again, that, that, the, the, the irony, as it were, of, of, of the dark colour that somehow gives birth to the royal blue. So that even the, the, the colouring of what seems to me to be a kind of a throne suggests the kind of ambivalence that uh, Smith really does capture, I think, extremely well in this painting.